So this is the latest 3D RC model I'm working on. It's the legendary F4U Corsair with the unmistakable gull-shaped wings and the really, really big prop. As many of my subscribers already know, I give these models away. So if you think you'd like to have a copy of this one when it's done, just subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. I'll do a shout out video when it's done and you can simply come download it. I'm designing this model in plasticity because it's become my go-to program for this kind of modeling. I just think it's the right tool for the job. If I want to design something with say gears and rotating assemblies, I'll use Fusion 360 because I think that's the best tool. But if I need to design something like this fuselage of an airplane with these beautiful sweeping curves, I want an advanced NURBS based modeler. And for me, plasticity is it, but you don't have to just take my word for it. Go download their free trial, give it a shot. If you like it, you can also save a full 10% off purchase by using my discount code REDBARON at checkout. Now to the point of this video, one of plasticity's strengths, as I mentioned, is its ability to create virtually any organic shape. And this program is capable of doing incredibly advanced NURBS-based modeling, and one of the things that makes that powerful and really easier to use, in my opinion, is the sketch features in the program. And that's really what I'm going to focus on in this video. An issue that came up while importing an airfoil shape that raised the question about curves. So in this video, I'm going to answer the question, what's the difference between a spline curve and a control point curve in plasticity? And how it came up is I was downloading an airfoil shape for this model. And by the way, the resource that I was using for this, it's very awesome, can be found here at this website called airfoiltools.com. Now, once you find the airfoil that you like, you can download that airfoil shape. I downloaded it as an SVG file, and this downloaded directly into Plasticity. But here's where the problem begins. These airfoil shapes are plotted by many mathematical points, and that makes it accurate, I guess. But it also introduces a problem of curvature. And this particular shape, there's as many as 25 or so plotted points. And they're all connected by line segments. And you can see the intended shape here, and that's great, but this is anything but a graceful, smooth curve that you would want for an airfoil. In fact, look what happens when I extrude it. What you're seeing there is simply a bunch of facets, hard-edged facets. So let's talk about curves, and we're going to talk about spline curves first. In plasticity, a spline curve is drawn by clicking along a path that you want. Now, every click creates an anchor point directly on that curve, and the curve then smoothly passes through each of these points to the next one. Now, this makes it great when you want to define a very specific outline, maybe tracing over a sketch or matching a profile from a reference image. What you see is exactly what you get. The curve goes exactly through the point you pick. Now let's look at control point curves. Instead of clicking points, the curve that runs through, you're creating a cage or a framework of control points. The curve doesn't necessarily pass through them. It gets pulled into the shape by them like a flexible strip of wood, or maybe think of a bending piece of metal. And this method, it's usually smoother, it's easier to adjust, and especially when you're trying to get free-flowing surfaces, like the shape of a wing airfoil, or a car body, or really any organic shape. You can drag the control points, and the curve updates, keeping things flowing nicely, with as few control points as possible. So, the difference, spline curves, precise, literal, the curve goes through every point. You would use them for accuracy. And control points, flexible, smooth, ideal for freeform design and shaping surfaces. So if you think about a spline as a drawing with a pin, it's hitting every exact spot you touch. 
And control point curves are like bending a ruler. You're shaping the overall flow, not micromanaging every wiggle. And where that starts to show itself in these drawings is say when you have a bunch of control points together, like say at the end of this leading edge of this airfoil shape. There's simply just too much information here and the curves start to kind of get out of control. What you'll see then is that the spline curve may begin to look jagged or wrinkled or cause a problem. So the solution is to edit them or even more ideally to remove some of those points. And once you start doing that, you're kind of getting yourself back to a control point, which is where I tend to gravitate when I do this. So that's pretty much it for this entry level video. If you liked it, guys, please give me a like. And also remember, if you'd like to have this model, please subscribe, hit that bell notification. When it's done, you will get notified of it. You can just download it. Also, guys, give me some comments. I want to know what it is you'd like to see. Other than that, thank you for watching.